It is a brand new episode of CNB Bazaar Buzz here on NDTV Prime. I'm Siddharth Vinayak Patankar. Here's what's coming up on today's program. It's hot and very powerful. That's the new performance variant of the Audi RS7. We get to all of your queries from our discussion forum on carandbike.com and the review of the India spec Jaguar F-Pace SUV. So the Audi RS7 is already a fairly powerful product. It's really sleek, stylish, very sexy and very high-end. Well, all of that now becomes even more so because this is now the most powerful version of the RS7 that's been launched here in India. It's called the RS7 Performance. It gives you 44 brake horsepower extra and that's no joke, is it? Amir and I drove the car. Here's the review. Four doors, four seats, weighing close to two tons, extremely usable space, quite the looker and of course very very powerful. That's the recipe Audi has used for this one. When you first look at the car, it looks like the regular RS7, which it is, and you're not wrong about it. But Audi thought that the RS7 needed some more power, which is why we have this, the performance package version of the RS7. Now this has horsepower, you can't possibly imagine how much, and definitely will crush the egos of the likes of the Ferraris and the Lamborghinis out there. It's a fact that there are no distinct demarcations which set it apart from the regular version and it probably doesn't need it because it's all about the engine. Now this is the same 4-litre V8 engine that we saw in the RS7 but Audi thought that 552 bhp was not enough which is why they put 44 more and that is a loss so the total actually goes up to 596 brake horsepower which is pretty awesome yes the 8 speed gearbox uh, manages to and the quattro all wheel drive system manages to churn all that power together at your disposal which means you have everything at the tap of a foot so when you put your foot down yes that's the kind of acceleration you have and you want that rush every single time audi claims this one can do 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in about 3.7 seconds which puts it in supercar territory had it had a launch control system surely we'd see it shave a few tenths more it's a fun package and you don't mind throwing this two-ton beast into a corner. And even your gearbox reacts to your every command. Eight-speed gearbox is smooth and the gears climb with great precision and there's not a hint of hesitation there. Tap the paddle shifter and voila! You have a manual control and yes, you can push this one to its limit. There are those of us who want to hear the bellow of that V8 but sadly the brilliant work on the insulation in the cabin keeps that exhaust note away. The electronically controlled flaps on the standard sports exhaust set a baritone that is enjoyable. For those who think this RS7 is a brute, try turning it to comfort mode and everything about it is civilized. The air suspension on the RS7 is well calibrated and the ride quality is smooth. Use the suspension raise function and you get a little extra ground clearance and this helps in battling bad roads or even giant speed breakers. At 21 inches, the wheels are quite big and the tyres have slim side walls, which make them susceptible to damage. And this is where you have to make a mental note while tackling potholes. The cabin is similar to the RS7 with carbon fibre inserts on the dash and around the gear selector. The dial instrument features black faces, white dials and red needles, which look sporty. There's the RS logo splashed on the flat bottom steering wheel, the seats, the entry sills, the tachometer the driver information system and the MMI navigation system. The retractable MMI screen hosts navigation, music system controls and Bluetooth. There are two USB slots and an SD card reader too. The hexagonal stitching on the snug seats adds a tinge of use to the cabin. 
do not expect good headroom at the rear though, considering that the RS7 gets the tapering roof, so there's a bit of a hassle there. The RS7 performance package is priced at 1 crore 59 lakh rupees, and this means it's about 12 lakh rupees more than the standard RS7. So, is it worth the extra bucks then? Absolutely, yes. It's one of the fastest, most usable and thrilling four-door coupes out there. So that's the new Audi RS7 performance. It looks like Amea had quite a blast with it. Now let's go to our community section here, the forum on the Car and Bike Show site, where uh, you post all your queries. And let me pull out a few of your questions that I want to quickly provide some answers to. So let's take your questions. The first one comes from Saurabh. He is looking for a cruiser bike with good fuel efficiency and affordable prices. And it's no surprise, he's therefore considering the Bajaj Avenger 150 Street or the 220 Street. Now the 220 gives you a little bit more power, no doubt about it, if your budget allows for that. Well, in the long run, you might be more satisfied with it. But the 150 in terms of technology gives you a little bit extra because uh, there have been a few updates made to that engine by Bajaj of late. And so uh, from that perspective, you might find it in running terms just to be a little bit smoother. Next question is from Vivek Sharma. He's confused between the Renault Duster and the Honda BRV. Wants my suggestion. Well, they are, of course, absolute competitors, aren't they? And uh, the BRV, I think the key advantage of buying that would be the three row seating. So if you need that kind of space, then without a doubt, it gives you that uh, big USP that the other cars in that segment do not. However, from uh, you know rough road or uh, slightly hard performance driving perspectives, well, then the Duster is the slightly more suited product and uh, it has a lot of grunt it's been well proven here in the market and overall i have to say if you're looking for an suv the duster ticks more boxes ajay is confused between the mahindra kuv 100 and the datsun go plus needs a family car and uh, will mostly be driving it in rural areas well the go plus is uh, you know a little bit advantageous in the sense that it gives you the seven seater option but it's not the best built car and from that perspective I think the uh, KUV100 will be a little bit more hardy and better suited to the kind of conditions you are looking to use this car in. So Ajay, I think uh, without a doubt if you don't really need 7 seats, go with the KUV. Ulhas is asking about the Skoda Yeti, he's keen to buy it but he is worried that Skoda might be looking to discontinue the model in India or bring in an upgraded version. Well, the upgrade, the facelift, all of that has already happened on the Yeti. And so even though it remains niche here in the Indian market, it has done uh, pretty well in Europe. The next generation of the Yeti will only break cover sometime next year globally, which means in India, we won't get it before 2018, it seems, possibly, even if uh, we're being optimistic. So really, many months still before something like that comes in. And so yes, if you like the car, it is efficient, it is good, well-built, go ahead with it. And finally, let me squeeze in one more from Nikhil, who's confused between the Royal Enfield Thunderbird 350, the Classic, the Himalayan, and the Bajaj RS200. Well, what would I suggest? Uh, Nikhil, really different bikes, aren't they? All of them have their own specific attribute. Of course, a couple of those from uh, Royal Enfield are a little bit close to each other. If you want that kind of retro styling, then I think the Classic makes a lot of sense because uh, it is relatively newer in that sense, in that lineup. It's got an updated engine. It's uh, got even updated components, frankly, compared to the old bullets. Looks nice and uh, is priced quite all right too. The Himalayan, it's a very specific purpose-built bike. So if you want something like that, if you want to do a little bit of adventure biking, perhaps even go off-road just a little bit, well, then the Himalayan is for you. For a daily commute, that may not be the best option. Uh, and then we come to the RS200. It is uh, really efficient in its running. It's a well-built product. And even though it has a really typical sports attribute, the good thing about the stance is you can ride it in a sporty uh, crouched stance or in an upright position. So it gives you that flexibility. It's reasonably powerful as well. So it will give you that performance as well. So if that's what you want, then of course the RS makes more sense. Otherwise, I'd say stick with the Classic. So remember, if you want to ask me any questions, you just have to come here to the Ask the Expert category. Click on it, post your question. I'll be happy to take it up either here on the site or on the show. Let's take a short break here. We come back with our review of the F-Pace from Jaguar. It's time to choose your favorite set of wheels and then 
drive them home. All you have to do is vote and win the CNB's Viewer's Choice Contest. If your choice wins the award, you could win that car or bike too. Just log on to carandbike.com slash CNB awards and cast your vote. The mobile CNB Viewer's Choice Car and Two Wheeler of the Year. Vote and win big. India's most credible awards. HDFC Ergo Gender Insurance presents NDTV Car and Bike Awards 2017, powered by Mobile. Drive through life, destiny, roads unknown. Over the next six months, we are taking you on an epic adventure. Through six continents, 60,000 kilometers and six months. Drive for borders don't exist. Nights. Days mean little. Different places, fascinating people. And joining me all through that will be this card. Six drivers stitch the world together through one great journey as they chase the sun across the earth. So these guys are doing something quite historic. And it'll be great to have you a part of it. GLA Adventure, every Tuesday at 8.30pm on NDTV Prime.